Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Dundalk Wesleyan Church. I want to welcome those who are going to be with us online as well. It's fantastic that everyone can be with us today. This is not a typical worship service. Uh, this is a Good Friday service, and so uh, we're doing things a little different than normal. So <laughs> I, if you're in the habit of trying to jump up and stand before for the first song, that will come soon enough. But uh, we're going to begin our service today with a prayer. And after, I'm going to be calling Andy forward to read our first scripture. So let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you on this Good Friday with hearts filled with gratitude as we think of the sacrifice that your son Jesus Christ made for us on the cross. As we enter into this time of worship, we pray that you would help us to see the depth of your love and the magnitude of your grace. We ask that you would help us to grasp more clearly the sacrifice that was made on our behalf and the hope that it brings us. May our hearts be filled with reverence and awe as we remember the suffering and death of Jesus. And may we never forget the incredible gift of salvation that was purchased for us on the cross. Lord, we ask that you would guide us through this service and make your presence felt among us. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer, we pray. Amen. I'd ask Andy to come forward to read our first scripture for today, which is Isaiah 53, verses 1 to 12. Isaiah 53, 1 to 12. Who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised, rejected by mankind, and a man of suffering, and familiar with pain, like one who whom people hide their faces from and, and are despised. We held him in low esteem. Surely he took our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punishment by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we were healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shears, he, he was silent. So he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. Yet who of the, his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living, for the transgression of my people, he, he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich to his death. Though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit out of his mouth, yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he has suffered, he will see the light of the light of life and be satisfied. By his acknowledge, by his knowledge and righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbed by the, with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Amen. Amen. Thank you. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of the word. For those who are able to stand, please stand as we worship God through music. Father's love for us, how vast. 
just beyond all measure that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure how great the pain of searing loss the father turns his face away as wounds which mother chosen one bring many sons to
You may be seated. At this time in our service, I'm going to ask Terry to come forward to read our second scripture reading, Mark chapter 15, verse 33 to 39. At uh, noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, listen, he's calling Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with uh, wine vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now uh, leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, Surely this man was the Son of God. Thank you. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. For those who are able, please stand as we continue to sing uh, songs of worship to God.
blood that my Jesus spilled. Now the curse of sin has no hold on me. The sun sets free, oh it's free indeed. Now my debt is paid, it is paid in full by the precious blood that my Jesus spilled.
You may be seated. Well, friends, at this time in our service, if you have your Bibles with you or if you use a Bible app, we're going to be turning to the, uh, to the Gospel of John. We're going to be reading from chapter 16, uh, verses 25 to 33. Again, that's John chapter 16, 25 to 33. It will be on the screen behind me, too, as well. I want to thank Andy and Terry for sharing our readings today. Andy uh, shared the prophetic words that the prophet Isaiah wrote down some 700 years before Jesus began his earthly ministry. 700 years. And Terry shared with us today from Mark's account of the final moments of Jesus' life before his death. Now, in a couple of days, we will be celebrating the resurrection of Jesus on Easter Sunday. We know with hindsight that the events of Good Friday are not the end of the story. And though we may not particularly like spending time in this moment of pain, of suffering, of sadness, it's good for us to take time to reflect on this moment and to remember. I never liked the phrase, Good Friday. Funny, uh, my wife mentioned that as we were driving to church that she didn't like the phrase Good Friday. I was like, what, have you been checking out my sermon? And I used to wonder, you know, how in the world could we call the day that Jesus, our Lord and Savior, dying, be considered good? But without this day, without the sacrifice, we would be helpless in our sin you know, the price of our choices, our rebellion, needed to be, be paid. Today is Good Friday. It's not just about sadness or remorse. It is a day of hope. Through Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, he managed to do the impossible. Jesus overcame the world and, and provided a way for us to overcome the world as well. Today, with our scripture, we're going to backtrack a little bit from what we read or what uh, Terry read of the final moments on the cross, and we're going to turn our focus towards the, towards the words that Jesus shared with his followers as he encouraged them to hold on to the faith. So in John 16, as we'll see in our scripture, Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Today, as we 
we'll look at our scripture. We will consider the impact that Jesus victory had on those around him and what it means for us to overcome the world as well. At this time, let's pray. Oh Lord, as we come to your word, we ask that you open our hearts so that we may receive what you wish to impart to us today. Let your word speak clearly to us and use this time in which we focus on your word to encourage us in our faith. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. And with that, let us read John chapter 16, verse 25 to 33. Though I have been speaking figuratively, a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language, but will tell you plainly about my father. In that day, you will ask in my name. I am not saying that I will ask the father on your behalf. No, the father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the father and entered the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the father. Then Jesus' disciples said, now you are speaking clearly and without figures of speech. Now we can see that you know all things and that you do not even need to have anyone ask you questions. Jesus, or this makes us believe that you came from God. Do you now believe, Jesus replied, a time is coming and in fact has come when you will be scattered each to your own home. You will leave me all alone, yet I am not alone for my father is with me. I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. In the time of the Old Testament, very few people had the privilege of having any kind of close relationship with God. For most, God's presence was just too much to bear. His glory was just overwhelming. In the time when Moses led Israel, the Israelites even begged Moses to speak to God on their behalf. And through uh, the Old Testament times, God used a select group of people to help lead and guide his chosen people. Much of what the people knew of God came from the words that God himself gave the prophets to share. And that was the status quo. God would talk to a few people who would then share his words with everyone else. Then the prophets grew silent. And for 400 years, there was nothing. There was nothing. The world grew dark. Oppression was on the rise. God's people found themselves being crushed and their land was occupied by other kingdoms. And even when Jesus came into the picture, when he spoke about God, he spoke in parables, stories that uh, connect earthly images to heavenly truths. But these stories left many still confused. Many people wondered, uh, was this Jesus, the long-awaited Messiah, the Savior that God had promised would come? In verse 25, we read of how things would change. In this moment of time when our scripture takes place, Jesus was still in the process of overcoming the world. Soon, though, his death and resurrection, he would provide a path of salvation and transform our way of understanding God. Jesus explained that even his use of parables would fall away and that things of God would be spoken clearly, plainly. Jesus said, though I have been speaking figuratively, a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language, but will tell you plainly about my father. With the fulfillment of God's plan, the knowledge of God would be freely and readily understood. No longer would people be grasping in the dark wondering if they understood who God is. The knowledge about God would be clearly laid out. For the disciples who had spent years with Jesus following him as he shared the gospel message, spending their lives with him, breaking bread with him, witnessing uh, the lives that Jesus touched as he performed miracle after miracle, sitting at the feet of Jesus as he taught they too struggled to grasp, grasp who Jesus was 
and what God was doing through him. Now, it was clear to them. Jesus made it plain to them when he said to them in verse 28, I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. Jesus would overcome the world. His victory was not just his doing. Jesus came into the world in perfect submission and perfect unity with his Father. And it was with his Father's help. God, the Father's presence in his life, that Jesus was able to do what he did on that faithful day that we call Good Friday. Jesus confirmed this truth beforehand when he told his disciples in our scripture in verse 32, a time is coming and in fact has come when you will be scattered each to your own home. You will leave me all alone. Yet I am not alone for my father is with me. Turning to us, our victory is not of our doing. It is through Jesus' sacrifice. Through his death and resurrection, Jesus has overcome the world, and we too can overcome it through faith in him. The disciples struggled to grasp this truth, but praise be to God that after Jesus' death and resurrection, things finally became clear to them, and they took hold of the truth. Starting in verse 29 of our scripture, it tells us of how they started to grasp this truth. When Jesus' disciples said, now you are speaking clearly and without figures of speech. Now we can see that you know all things and that you do not even need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. Christ has promised us eternal life. His resurrection after three days in the tomb and the 500 eyewitnesses who saw Jesus after he had been crucified and had been risen again is proof that there is eternal life. Jesus said in verse 33 of our scripture, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. This world we live in is a beautiful place. I love exploring it, but it is also broken. And there is much pain, suffering, and uncertainty in this world. Almost every day we are confronted with its brokenness. We hear of wars and of fighting. We see how people suffer from things like hunger and disease and loss. Men and women fight with one another and people inflict pain on each other. We see the consequences of the fall in which sin entered the world. Yet we can and we will overcome this world because we have victory in Jesus. Jesus himself encouraged us, as he said to his followers, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Everything in this world is uncertain. There is nothing in this world that will last. Yet even in our most difficult trials, we will not be crushed because we have our hope, our faith in Jesus, and he has already overcome that which threatens to overwhelm us. Today, as we remember Jesus' ultimate sacrifice, we can take comfort in the strength and in the promise of eternal life. May we always keep faith and live a life rooted in Christ that reflects our victory through his sacrifice. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the victory that Jesus has won for us. May we go forth from, from here with confidence, knowing that the struggle is real. The battle, though, is already won. May we remain steadfast in our faith in Jesus as we go forth. And may our faith shine brightly through our words and our deeds so that others may see and know Jesus lives in us. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. One final song.
Well, friends, that concludes our service. I want to thank you for being here today. And I also want to share that we have our Easter Sunday service, and you're more than welcome to be a part of that. It'll be at 1030 on Sunday. I hope you guys have a wonderful Good Friday, remembering the hope that we have in him. Amen. God bless everyone.